the Tureva Jakari Puko 85 and the Tureva Scrama 80. Are they just cute little knives to add to your collection? Or are they real working tools that you can count on in the woods? If you want to hear my thoughts on it, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a couple of things. First, I'd like to thank Verustalika for sending me these two knives so that I could share them with you. What we're going to do now is I will focus in on each of the knives. I'll give you the specifications for each of these knives. And I'll tell you what I discovered about them that makes them something worth considering. All right, let's get started. And the first knife we're going to take a look at is the Tureva Scrama 80. And if you're familiar with the knives from Verustalika, there are the two lines, the ones, the Scrama line and the Jakari Puko line. I have both the uh, Tureva Scrama 240 and the Tureva Scrama 200 that I've previously reviewed on this channel. And this is the little miniature version of the same knives, but it's not just shrunk down. There are some unique features about these knives that set them apart from the others. Visually, they have a lot in common. Functionally, they have a lot in common, but still they did more than just shrink them. They made them functional little knives as we'll see in a few moments time. So what I'll do quickly is I'll go through the specifications for this one, and then I'll bring in the other one, the Jokari Puko 85, go through its specifications, and then I'll bring the two of them back in. And I have, of course, my Tureva Jokari Puko 110 with me to compare so we can see the size differences. And then we'll do a few demonstrations so that I can show you what is unique about them. So let's start with this one, the 80, the Scrama 80, 4.41 ounces or 125 grams. Blade length, 3.15 inches, which is 80 millimeters. Total length from tip to pommel, 7.28 inches, 185 millimeters. Blade thickness, where are you? Oh, almost out of focus there. 0.128 of an inch, which is 3.25 millimeters. Edge, edge angle is 23 degrees. The steel is familiar to the other knives, and that, of course, is 80 CRV2, hardened to 59 on the Rockwell scale. And, of course, these are made in Finland, like the other knives are. I will give you the uh, sheath, quick look at the sheath. And the sheaths are identical, of course, except for the shape to accommodate the different shapes of the knives. And they're identical to the leather sheaths that come with the other knives in the lineup. Same hard plastic liner inside, same leather, high quality leather over the uh, outside, same dome snap for extra retention, not that it's necessary. The only thing that's really different about it is this doesn't have a dedicated dangler like the other sheaves do. But you can see it fits inside with an authoritative snap, it stays in there very well. I'll bring that the two knives together in a moment after I go through the specs for the 85 now. All right, had to do a quick battery change there. The first battery died on me, so we'll pick up where we left off. So again, once again, this is the Tureva Jakari Puko 85, indicating the length of the blade. Let's quickly go through the specifications. Weight overall, 4.41 inches, 125 grams. Length, blade length, that is, 3.35 inches, 85 millimeters. Total length, 7.28 inches, 185 millimeters blade thickness same as the other at 0.127 inches or 3.25 millimeters same edge angle 23 degrees same steel 80 cr v2 carbon steel hardened 59 and again made in finland so let me quickly share the sheath with you so once again the sheath identical to the other one except of course for the shape difference plastic liner inside leather molded over that dome snap retention holds in nicely inside. The only difference being from the small knives to the bigger knives is again, it's not a dedicated dangler. It's just a simple belt loop on there. So while I didn't bring my larger scrammas out to show you a comparison, I did bring out my Chikari Puko 110 so that I could show you some comparisons, some similarities and some differences between the two. So this is my Jakari Puko 110, 110 indicating the length of the blade. And this is my Jokari Puko 80. So yeah, there's quite a bit of a difference in size. First off, let's just compare blade length. As you can see, there is the blade length considerably longer on the 110 than the 85, but also the handle is longer on the 110 than the 85. As well, the handle shape is a little different. You can see this has the uh, double choil palm swell type of a handle. 
This just has a very gentle palm swell here and a bit of a choil towards the front, but they both have the same full tang, hidden tang underneath the rubber over mold on it. Now, here's a bit of a difference. When you look at the 110, it looks like it's almost a flat top, but it is a gentle drop point, not a lot, but just a gentle drop point towards the tip. Whereas when you look at the 85, it actually rises here. It comes up in this area and then starts to drop. Uh, what that allows on the shape of this knife, it just means that you have more belly on the forward leading edge of the blade than you would if it went straight out, because it would probably end down a little bit lower if it was straight out or even a straight out drop point as well. Okay, so those are the physical differences between the two of them, but there's one more thing. I want to see if this is going to show up for you and if you can pick it up. Look at the grind angles on the two of these. Here's where things really got interesting, and I will demonstrate this in a minute just for a comparison's purposes. But if you look at the 110, and you can see where it is ground off and where the black remains, you can see how tall the grind is. And of course, these are not true Scandies. They are Scandi ground, but they have a, a micro bevel, secondary micro bevel, so small you can barely see it. But that's a good thing. But look at the 85. Look how much taller, I mean, not a lot, but it is taller, right? It's got a taller grind angle than the 110 does. When you combine that with the thinner blade stock, oh my goodness, how much slicier this knife is. This is really a slicey little knife. And it has a lot more curve on the uh, forward part of the blade as well. The advantages here, as I see it, not only is it more slicey, uh, leading to a better feather sticks, as you'll see in a moment, but I think I can use this now for skinning game if I wanted to, at least more so than I could. I think this may be just a little bit more versatile. Now, keep in mind, it's a smaller knife, right? Three and what, three, just over three and a quarter inches. It's not a very big knife. But that doesn't mean it's not a capable knife. So what I thought I would do is, in a moment's time, is we'll do a few demonstrations with this one and the Scramma, and then I'll tell you which one I think is the better purchase for you. So let's just bring the Scramma back in. All right, so Scramma with uh, 80, with the Jerkari Puko 85. You can probably see just a little bit longer in the, well, that's probably better, a little bit longer in the blade. Not a whole lot, but a little bit longer. But here's where things start to get interesting. I don't have the scramma to show you, but once again, that thin stock and the higher grind, uh, grind angle here means, once again, a slicier knife. Now, you can do that with a smaller knife, of course, because you're not putting it through the same uh, intense splitting that you would your bigger uh, knives, the bigger versions of these things. So you don't mind that it is thinner. It'll still split wood. Don't get me wrong. It'll still split wood. But you can get away with a thinner angle here, which means a bit more slicey, a bit easier to carve with. Now, here's the other differences. Let's, I think it'll show up well if you do it this way. Look at the curve on the blade of the 85. Quite dramatic. This is the 85. Look at the curve on the blade of the Scramma. Very slight, very slight. But what you get, look at the lower third or the lower half of the blade and then compare it with the top part. What I'm trying to get at here is the 80, shorter in blade, yes, but longer in flattened surface. So there is much more straight surface or a slightly curved surface on this knife than there is on this knife. Really, the curving starts way back here. So if I can show that, probably about here. So if you're looking for a long span of straight flat blade, this is the one to choose. And I'll talk about why that could be valuable to you in a moment's time. However, this one actually make, allows for some better carving, as you'll see. I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. I guess probably the best thing to do is I have some splits of, wood, of maple here, and we'll just do some light carving, and then I can show you where each one has its strengths. All right, I just took a two and a half inch piece of maple and split it out with my 110. Not that I couldn't have split it out with either of these two knives. I think if it would span it, it certainly could be used to split it. But I didn't want to suggest for a moment that I'm using these knives for splitting down wood for fire purposes. I could do small splits, the kind when you do like that, tap splits, but I wouldn't baton through large pieces of knives. Again, not because the knives wouldn't handle it, it's just that I've got bigger knives and I'm usually working with bigger pieces of wood. So I wouldn't count on this for a splitting knife. Again, it's capable of it. But what I would count on this for is carving. So I do have a piece here of maple. Let's see, the heartwood. 
Uh, it's not straight, but there's no knots. So maybe that's all I need is no knots. Let me just turn this down a little bit so you can catch more of this. And we'll start up here. And the first time I did this, I just absolutely marveled at how easily this knife will run down the edge of this wood. It's just amazing. With very little effort, this knife is creating some curls. that I know a lot of larger knives would have trouble doing. Am I catching the curls in here? For whatever reason, oh, probably because it's a heartwood. It's running down the heartwood, but it's, the curls are not rolling over, but it is gliding through this wood real, real easy. And the reason this works so well it's because of the high grind, relatively high compared with the 110, and the thinner stock. So it will run down wood really, really well. Now that's not the only thing it'll do, but I just wanted to show you that because I'm gonna get another piece of wood and I'm gonna bring the 80 into the uh, show here to show you what it's capable of. All right, so here is the Scrama 80 and just a small piece of wood, a little less hardwood on it. I'm not sure how well, how much better it's gonna work, but let's just have a look. So. Starting off with some really fine ones. Of course, my piece of wood is pretty small. And this is equally easy to run down this piece of wood. If this was simply a scaled down version or a short version of either the larger Scramas or the uh, Jakari Pukos, then it would not glide through the wood as, as well as it's doing on these ones. Ooh, some very fine curls there. So yeah, now, I, what I think I'll do is I'll just pick up another piece out of this uh, little billet of wood and use my 110 just to give you a comparison. Now, so here's the piece I chose to work with with my 110, Jakari Puko 110. There is a knot down here, but I can work down to the knot. Uh, it may actually help me hold my curls on a little bit. So, you know, it's still a good performer. As you can see, it's still creating curls just like you want but I can tell you now perceptually anyway it's got a little bit more resistance than the smaller knives do and that is due primarily to the fact that it's thicker stock and relative to the other ones the edge is not as high on it still as you can see now I have a full review oh, that was a big one that was too big I have a full review on the 110, so this is not a demonstration of the 110. It's more of a comparison between the 110, the Jakari Scrama 80, and the Jakari, or not the Jakari, Tureva Scrama 80, and Tureva Jakari Puko 85. All right, so as you can see, the 110 does a good job. Which one is this? This is the Scrama 80, it does a good job. And this one was the Tureva Jakari Puko 85, also does a good job. But that's not where things really show a difference between the knives. Now I'll set up to do that. All right, uh, again, just one of the same pieces of wood I was just carving on. And uh, what I wanna show you now is what it's like to work out towards the tip on the, each of these two knives, because it is here where the real differences start to show up between them. So uh, once again, this is the Jakari Puko 85. I'm getting so many names, I gotta keep from getting them mixed up. So what I wanna show you here is if I'm carving way out here at the tip, what I have is a nice edge that I can push forward like this. So this is kind of levering it off of my thumb. And what I have is I have a continuous curve at this point right here, which makes it easy to push into the wood, very little resistance, and I can kind of slice, run the knife through the cut as opposed to pushing it through as you would with a flat surface. So if I wanted to dig into the wood a little bit deeper, this is where the curve on the front of that really starts to shine. You can see how easily it just kind of dug and buried itself 
and that's due to the curve on this part right here. Okay, let me bring the 80 back in, the Scrama 80, work at the other end of this one and do exactly the same tasks. So working here, I get a little bit more blade to work with, or at least a little bit more straight edge blade, but I don't have that curve up here. So watch what happens. Not so bad so far. As you can see, it can still push like this, but I will tell you there is more resistance to it occurring. Now, if I want to do the same, oh yeah, <laughs> there's a huge difference here. If I want to push in and try to gouge out the wood, there is a lot more resistance. It was a lot more work to get down there. Now, if I'm trying to flatten something out and actually create a flat surface, this is better because I have all that relatively straight edge that I can use to flatten something out like I did here. But if I'm looking to create curves in the wood, this is an easier knife to work with going down like this into the wood. All right, so that's a couple of differences. Now here's something else I discovered. If I want to create a groove in the wood for any number of reasons, in fact, I've done this to make imp improvised spoons in the past, what I will do is use the tip of the knife, trying to make sure this will show up on camera, and push it along. So I'm just kind of pushing it with my thumb and I'm creating a V notch running the length of the wood. Now I'm just starting one here because it takes a while to actually do this. You have to run it from both directions to get back and forth to create it. Um, I can do it, but when I did this with practice and then I picked up the Scrama 80, watch this. Oh my goodness, it just goes right into the wood at depth. And that's because of that, oh, there you are, fine tip on the edge of it. You can see where the wood, little wood chips are. I can get much more control because the angle that I'm working at is so much better between this knife and the other one. Once again, let's see if I can show the angle. So I have the angle right here and I can get control and get in and create that V that I want to. Whereas with this knife, if I hold it at that angle, you can see what's happening. I get a flat edge. I don't get that leading edge. I have to really bring the knife backwards, kind of in towards me. And I don't have the control nor the power to get in there or the accuracy I'm discovering right now to get in and create that groove. All right, just some fundamental differences. Um, okay, I think I've shown you where the knives are similar and where the knives are different. Let's wrap this video up with my thoughts and my recommendations. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few more comments on the similarities, differences between the Jakari Puko 85 and the Tereva Scrama 80, and which one I think might be the right one for you if you want to consider either of these two knives. First off, let's talk about where do they fit in your kit? Uh, are they a regular full-size belt knife? Are they a backup knife? Or what, just what are they? Well. I would look at them primarily as a backup knife. However, having said that, I wouldn't be uh, uh, opposed to carrying this as my primary knife on my belt if I had larger tools to work with. So if I'm carrying my Tereva Scrama, uh, either the 200 or the 240, a saw, or an axe to go with, then maybe that's all I need because this will certainly do all the other chores that a belt knife will do. It'll do the feather sticking, the carving, the food prep, and just about anything you ask of it. Either one of these will do that. So yeah, they could be used as a primary knife. In fact, if I was just going out for a little hike, wasn't planning on cutting any wood down, but wanted to have a knife on my side, maybe for the chores you do on most hikes, opening packages and the like, or a little just fun whittling and carving, either one of these knives would serve on that. They'd be smaller, lighter, and uh, just a you know, little easier to work with. Okay, so either one of these would act as a great backup knife. They could be considered a primary knife, even though they are kind of short, as long as you've got something bigger to work with. So there is that. Now, one thing I haven't talked about is the, the grips themselves, the handles. As you can see, they're identical one to the other, perfectly identical, the same length, same width, same. Uh, everything about it. But you're probably asking yourself, Mark, you're always talking about your extra large hands and how so many knives don't fit very well. How does this little knife work in my hand? Surprisingly well, really surprisingly well. Now, when I grab it, I swallow it, it just grabs right up, but I still have my baby finger on the knife. Now it's, it's close to the end, but it's still on the knife. So I still absolutely have full control and can make maximum use of this grip. And I think the reason for that is the design of the grip itself. It's the ratio. It's it's not really thick through this way, 
but it's quite thick through in that direction. And it is that ratio of width as plus the grippiness of the rubber handle that means that I can maintain control of this knife no matter how short it is. Same thing goes with this knife, obviously. Okay, what else can I say about them? Uh, well, let's just cut to the chase. Which one would I carry on a regular basis if I was going to have to choose between the two of them? I think you probably guessed. It's the Jakari Puko 85. Mostly because I don't do that much fine curving at the end of the tip of the knife that I'd need something that has that fine a tip on it. And still, it does have a fine tip. I, it's just that one little action that I showed you where I was creating that V notch in the wood where this one excels over this one. I can still do it with this. It was just easier to do with this. However, everything else that I would do in terms of carving, cutting, skinning, I'm not a hunter, but if I was, I could certainly use this for skinning game, uh, maybe gutting fish or any uh, food prep around, opening boxes or bags or whatever it is you're doing else in the woods, you're not opening boxes, but even at home, then I think this is the better of the two knives. I like this knife. <laughs> it's so, it's cute, right? It's kind of a scaled down version of the larger, almost like a mini sax knife. So yeah, it's nice, but if I was laying down my money, and again, I thank Verustalika for sending it to me, I would purchase this knife over this one. But, uh, you know, that's my personal choice and what I've rationalized. Oh, a uh, few things I haven't mentioned about this knife. It has the same angled edges as the largest knife, the same sharp spine. You can see it's actually peeling some of my thumbnail off, so it'll do all the same scraping. In fact, this is a little easier to use for scraping and scraping things like a ferrocerium rod or fatwood because of its shorter length. You're not smacking the tip of the blade in the ground or rocks or anything like that. So, you know, actually, it's probably a better knife for fire lighting than the large ones is. You know, here's something else you could consider. If you don't want to wear this as a belt knife, why not wear it around your neck like a neck knife? Uh, they're a little bit heavy, I'll, I, I'll tell you that. They're a little bit heavy for a neck knife, but not too much. You know, that's not bad, right? You could wear that around your neck as a neck knife, or at least I could and would. Uh, but I think more likely that what this has been doing lately is just being dropped into my pack and then I can reach into it when I want the smaller knife. And on a couple of hikes, I just wore it on my belt instead of my 110, which is the one I carry most often when I take one of my two, one of my Jakari Pukos out with me. All right, uh, all kinds of information to absorb. Differences to look at between the two knives. A lot of similarities, but some subtle differences in the way they perform because of their blade shapes. I would open it up to you now. What are your thoughts on each of these two knives, the Tereva Scrama 80 and the Chikari Puko, Tereva Chikari Puko 85? Uh, do you think they're functional knives? Do you think they're legitimate use knives that you might carry with you? Which one do you prefer? Do you have any experience with either, maybe both of these knives? I'd be interested in all of those comments in the comments section below. As always, I'll put all the information I have on these knives as well as the links to where you can have another look at them in the video description and links to a short playlist just on my Tereva or my Verustalika knives if you're interested in taking a look at the big ones and the small ones. Okay, folks, that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.